One of the things I get asked the most about by customers when they come to pick up their engines is where I buy these heavy duty skid stands from for the heavy diesel engines. Truth is, I don't buy them, I make them, and I wanna show you in this video how you can make them at home really cheaply. You're all you're gonna need is a welder, some cutting tools, a 3D printer, or a friend with a 3D printer to make the templates, and you're good to go. Let's get going. So first, you need to measure the distance of your mounting points. Then make yourself a template. I 3D printed this one, but you can make it out of cardboard, it doesn't matter, just make sure that it actually fits before you ruin a piece of metal. Then get yourself a piece of quarter inch steel plate, thicker if you like, and drill the holes to match it. I put a hole in the center as well because when we come to weld the pipe on it, you don't want to end up with a sealed chamber. This is the pipe we're going to use for the rest of it. We're just going to cut it into four sections. They're going to be a little bit bigger than we need them so that we can square them up and put the angles on. For a coming swell valve, the engine's about 32 inches long, so that's what length we're going to cut our skids. For the down sections, to get it at the right sort of angle, in our case, we're going to give it about 16 inches. Um, I'm going to make those cuts, and then we'll start truing them up. So this is what you should end up with. Two long sections that are the same length as your engine, roughly, and then the two down pipes, which in my case are going to be 17 inches because I had a little bit extra for the angles. Now I'm going to trim up those two long ones now so that they're square on the bandsaw so that they're ready and then we'll go into the two shorter ones which are going to have some more complicated cuts. Okay so now we're at the point where we need to cut the pipe notch. The trick to this, and I forget this quite a lot, is you need to go from the centre of your pipe notcher and line it up with the edge of your pipe. That's going to give you the arc that you need to go onto the bottom. It's very easy, and I, I forget and mess this up a lot, to line it up with this side of the cutter into your material and you end up wasting a lot of material that you don't need to. Uh, so don't fall into that trap. And this is just going to be a straight 90 degree cut because it's going in on that bottom rail. And this is the shape you're going to end up with when you're done. You've just got the radius there where the pipe can fit on at the bottom. And you don't have to do that with one of these fancy machines. You can cut this out with a grinder, just carefully putting slots in and going through and then cleaning it up. It takes a little longer, but it's cheaper because you don't have to buy the machine. Um, and I would, if you're gonna go down that route, make yourself a little cardboard template or 3D printed that goes around that has that shape. And then you can draw it round and you know then you can match it on both of them. So this is how you get the exact right angle for your cut. I've got two 3D printed templates here and I'm going to link to them in the comments so you can download them for free. But they both have flat bottoms so all you have to do is put it on and look until you have that arc lining up. And they, because they have these flat bottoms on them and they just sit on top of them, when you have that lined up with the arc it will be completely square and you have the exact 55 degree angle that you need there to do your cut. So just mark that out with whatever marking thing you prefer and cut all the way around there. Next thing you need to do obviously is clean off the mill scale on both your pipes. So to get a flap disc or whatever you're gonna do and make sure these are bright shiny metal around there and around the end of your pipe. Once you've done that, you can slide the pipe with the cut on it into this side of the template. This template lightens up and it's the most important one as far as making sure your engine stand is square. So you line it up with the four holes and then you've got a hole either side to make your two tacks. Put two tacks on there with a the welder and that will hold you completely square with everything lined up properly. And then you can just bust this template off, finish the rest of your weld, and um, that's all gonna be straight then. This is now cleaned, clamped, and ready to tack. You don't need huge tacks, just something in there that holds it and then you just break this template off. Now we have to weld the skids on. Now you would assume that if you used a 90 degree welding magnet, it would be perfectly 90 degrees and everything would be great. It never seems to be the case. So there's two things that you need to line up here. One is this plate here with the cross member. So the way you get around that is bolt something long to it. Um, preferably not a square like I have, but just some very long piece of uh, metal that's straight-ish. And then look down from the top, and if you close one eye, you can see that it's parallel all the way along. Then take your level, stick it to the vertical, check that you've got this mounted in the vise, oh, totally vertical, 
and then put this on the top and make sure the bubble's in the middle and you have it absolutely square then. And you can just put your tacks on, adjust, check it again and adjust after your tacks and then go in and weld that round. I like to drill a little hole in one end of the skids just so I've got something to hang it because I powder coat them, but it makes it easier to paint as well, depending on where you're hanging it from. This is the first one coated. Here we have the finished stands bolted onto the engine. You just use the OEM engine mounting bolts and it goes on either side. And as you can see, it's supporting it centrally. Now this red stand that it's on now, I'm not comfortable putting cylinder heads on these big heavy diesel engines on these red stands. It's just pulling it from the back. It's not an even distribution of weight. So what I will do now is I will lift this engine up using the hoist, take that red stand off, and I can lower this down onto these skids and know that the weight is being supported equally from the center. It's a lot, lot stronger. If I need to move them around on the shop, I lower them onto a pallet and if it's long-term storage, they just sit on the skids on the floor.